Log entry, The Catch Scarlet Queen. Philip Carney, master. Position, three degrees, seven minutes north. 104 degrees, two minutes east. Wind fresh to moderate. Sky fair. Remarks? Departed Singapore after being guest at unsuccessful wedding. Reason for failure? The Winchester rifle and the ambitious groom. It was a sun-brilliant, wind-fresh morning when we stood into Koi Pang on the island of Timor, our port of call after a long run up from Sydney. The stevedores were waiting for us as we walked into the Nederlander Asiatic Company's docks. And by the time the Scarlet Queen was riding to her horses, our cargo was swinging out over the side, guided by the gentle hand of my chief mate, Gallagher. Later, a portly messenger waddled aboard the Queen. You are Captain Carney, yeah? Yeah. I have here cable for you from Singapore, yeah? Oh, thanks. The cable was from the Singapore offices of Kang and Sons China Traders, the company under which the Scarlet Queen had set out on her voyage and under which we were still sailing. But the cable didn't have to do with business affairs. Come here. Yeah, what's up? Just get that stuff off in a hurry. You and I are going to a wedding. We're going to a what? Yeah, look. It's addressed to you and me. It says, my son, mm. request the honor of your presence at the marriage between my daughter, Nanhua, and the honorable Yu Lang at my home on the 26th instant. Affectionately, Coochie Kang. Nanhua. Yeah. Come on, let's get moving, shall we? Watch me move cargo. I'd miss your wedding before I'd miss hers. Hey there! I want three more red balloons, three more balloons. Everything fit, except the expression on Nanhua's face. It should have been happy, but it wasn't. Red and I followed the crowd out onto the street. The bride and groom appeared in the doorway, and the ever-present Chinese firecrackers started popping. What's the matter with Nanhua? Skipper, everybody's happy but her. I've been wondering, too, Red. I don't know. Gaiety suddenly changed. Yu Lang and the groom stiffened and crumpled at the screaming Nanhua's feet. By the time we got to him, he was dead. When we rolled him over, we saw a bullet hole in his forehead, just over his right eye. So Mutual continues The Voyage of the Scarlet Queen, written by Gil Dowd and Bob Tallman, and starring Elliot Lewis. The Scarlet Queen, proudest ship to plow the seas, bound for uncharted adventure. Every week, a complete entry in the log, and every week, a league further in The Voyage of the Scarlet Queen. to find out. Take her inside, Red. Get her someplace where it isn't so noisy. Yeah, come on, Anne. Well, let's go inside. Come on, where your friend can't see your balls. Oh, boy, how? Why would she, Captain? He shot. Yeah, all finished. Other man, Lee Chen Si, he shot, I think. Huh? Who's Lee Chen Si? He heart said from Nan Hua. She married this man. He talk hate on this man. Now much sorrow he do. Uh, I call, uh, Shung Jin? Police, yeah, somebody should call uh, the police. Philip, my son, I was inside. What is it? I'm afraid it couldn't be worse, Kang. He's dead. I was told that, Philip. 
But how? Somebody used the noise of the firecrackers to cover the sound of the shot. How could it be, my son, such sadness in a night so recently noisy with happiness? I don't know, Kay. I don't know. Good Lord, what's happened to Lou Yang? I saw him stand... He's been shot. Yes, Ralph. Tell me, what in heaven's name happened? This is Ralph Clayton, Philip, my assistant here in Singapore. Uh, hello, Mr. Clayton. This is Captain Carney, Ralph. I think he knows more than anyone about what happened. I don't know anything. I just saw him fall. Kang. Yes? Who owns that house across the street? Why, an aged one named Kuo Feng, Philip. Huh? I'll see you in a few minutes. I'm going to cross and take a look at that house and see if I can find Kuo Feng. I didn't find Kuo Feng. The house was dark and nobody answered my knock. I forced my way in. I climbed to the second floor. The two front rooms looked out across the now deserted street toward Kang's doorway, in which Nanhua and her groom had been standing. I didn't go any farther than the first room. A faint smell of powder smoke still hung in the hot air. I lit a match. In a corner, I found an ejected rifle cartridge case, American brand 38 Special. I slipped it into my pocket and left the house. <laughs> Philip, my son, did you see Kuo Feng? No, Kang, there wasn't anybody home. Did you find anything in the house, Captain Carney? Yeah, Clayton. The shot was fired from an upstairs room by an American rifle, 38 caliber. Really? An auto-loading weapon, I think. Why do you say that, Captain Carney? Because if it were bolder lever action, I don't think the killer would have ejected the shell. With an auto, he couldn't help it and probably wouldn't have wasted the time looking for it. It was pretty dark in there. I see. Well, I'll get back and check on Kuo Feng later. The policeman called? Yes, Philip, I myself called him. Well, then you've done everything you can, Kang. Uh, I probably want to ask you some questions. You better go and try to rest until I get here. Red? Oh, where the devil have you been, Skipper? You know I'm no good with women who are going to pieces. How is she? How do you think she is? She's better than she was, though. She's in there in the other room laying down. Uh, say, Skipper. Huh? Who is Lee Chen Si? Why? Well, she's been talking about him, about how he's got to get away. Yeah. He's some guy who wasn't in favor of her marrying Yu Lang. Huh? I'll tell you more after I've talked to her. Wait here. Hello, Phil. Hello, Nanwa. Kind of a rough sea tonight, huh? Yes, it is. But rougher for you, Lang, than for anyone else, don't you think? I'm not feeling sorry for myself. Is that what you meant? Yeah, that's what I meant. I wanted to remind you that you weren't because I want to talk to you about it. I'm all right, Phil. I want to talk about it. Good. Who is Lee Chen Si? Is he suspected already? No, I'm afraid he is. Did he do it, Nanwa? No. Of course he did not. Why was he the first one to be suspected? Because he is so quick with his temper and so sincere when he is angry. He... He threatened that he would kill Yu Lang. Why? Because he wanted to marry her? Yes. That is why. That's a point in his favor. Look, Nanwa, I... Yes, Phil? Well, both Red and I realized that you weren't happy tonight. I'm not going to ask you why you were going through a marriage that you didn't want. Because I am Chinese, I could not tell you if you did ask, Phil. Yeah, I sort of figured that. But, Phil, because Lee is Chinese and his friends are Chinese, no one will turn to help him. He will be arrested for a crime he had nothing to do with. The justice here in Singapore moves very rapidly... Phil, I am sure that he is innocent. He must be warned and... And kept out of sight someplace? Yes. All right, Nanwa. 
I haven't met many women I could believe, but you're one I can't. Where'll I find your Lee Chen Si? Oh, oh, Phil. I am not sure. But if you will go to his uncle, he's an old man, Kuan Yin. He has a druggist shop near the end of Tanming Road. Perhaps Kuan Yin will know where he is. Here, take this clasp, that he will know you are to be trusted. Okay, Nanwa. Red will go with me. Don't tell anybody where we've gone, even your father. He's too honest. All right, Phil. Your story to everyone is that we just left and said we'll see you later. Which we will. Red and I swung down toward the end of Tanglin Road. A street typically noisy and crowded. Kuan Yin's apothecary was dimly lit and filled by the odors of the strange and nameless things prescribed to maintain the Chinese health. A wizened little figure stood up behind a counter as we went in. Yes? You wish Chinese medicine? No, no, thanks, Doc. Red. We're looking for Li Chen Si. Nan Hua told us you might know where he is. Oh, no. I am not know. Kuan Yin, we friend with Nan Hua. She friend with Li Chen Si. I not know where Li Chen Si. Here, here, clasp Nan Hua Sen to show we friend. Oh, why you come? To help Li. He in big trouble. You hear about killing? Oh, I hear. News of death come quick, like death come. What you want? We want you to tell us where Li is. Not to. We want to help him. Police will come soon, Kuan Yin. All people think Lee kill man. We hide him. Police? Come here? Very soon. You come. All right. He shuffled ahead of us, leading us from the dim main room into an even dimmer hallway in the rear. Lee Chen Si? To tell you to the Nan Yi? Nari Wan Ao. Yi Chong Nari Chu. To the Nan Wa? Ah. Jing Shang Wan Yi Jian. Go. There. He opened door. Thanks, Kuan Yin. If police come, you talk loud, huh? We hear, then we go. Oh, yes, I do. Good. Come on, Red. Yeah. That is close enough. Who are you? Well, put the gun away, Lee. This is Red Gallagher, and I'm Phil Carney. We sailed for Nanhua's father. Oh, Captain Carney and Mr. Gallagher. Nanhua has told me about you. I'm sorry. It's all right. Come into my hiding place. Come on, Red. I am, as you Americans say, on a bad spot. No, I've been on worse ones myself. We're going to see what we can do to get you off of it, Lee. I'm glad there are at least three people in Singapore who think that I didn't kill Hold it. Jung Lang. That's the police. Police here? They didn't give us much leeway. They must have followed us. Is there a back way out of here, Lee? Yes, through the window to a roof below and then to the ground. All right, go ahead. We'll follow you out and talk later. All right, go ahead, Red. I've had lots of practice with window skipper. Yeah, sure. All right, let's go. <laughs> Lee Chen Si not only knew the way, but he knew the neighborhood like a tramp puppy. We paralleled Tanglin Road, but held to the middle of the blocks, cutting through yards, vaulting fences, invading lots of privacy. Lee, go on, go on. We don't want anything but our Stop playing with the rest. Let's do it. When we traveled seven or eight blocks and were down toward the Singapore River, we stopped. Lee led us through a narrow doorway and into a room in which a few Chinese sat. Some with glasses and bottles, some with newspapers. We slid into a curtained booth and sat down. <coughs> Well, nobody will follow us. We can be sure of that. Are you safe here, Lee? For a little while, I think. No. All right. Do you know who killed you, Ling? How can I say? I wasn't there. But you have a good idea. Is that what you mean? With my stupid threat spoken in front of some who were friends and some who perhaps were not, I gave anyone who wanted you long dead a good excuse to kill him. Yeah, you sure did. Well, that jealousy motor's been overworked, but it's always good. Are you in love with Nan Hua, Lee? Yes, sir. We had planned on marriage ourselves before she was 
Fourth stint. Fourth stint. Huh? Yes. I gave her the chance to tell me about it tonight, but she wouldn't. What is it, a matter of face? Yes. Without his knowledge, a great deal of smuggling is being done in her father's organization. In Kang's China traders? Yes. Yu Lang, who was a very ambitious man at best, took Nan Hua one night and showed her. He said he would expose it and ruin her father unless she married him. And she went through with it without saying a word to her old man, uh, her father? But if Kang wasn't in on it, I don't see what difference it would have made. Because you are not Chinese, Mr. Gallagher. Huh? Oh. To be exposed like that would have caused such a loss of face that he would have been ruined. For the same reason, I cannot tell the police, no matter what happens to me, because of what it would do to Nan Hua's father. It has to be a confession. Mm. But why was Yu Lang killed, Lee? I think because the man who was actually hiding the contraband goods in Kang's shipments was frightened because Yu Lang knew the truth. Do you know who that man is? I can only suspect. Ralph Clayton? I know only what Nan Hua told me about Yu Lang. Yeah. Tell me, Lee, what kind of a rifle do you have? Why, it's an American rifle. A Winchester, 38 Special. Why, Captain? That's the weapon that killed you, Lang. Where is it? I... It would take a very good friend to believe this, I'm afraid, Captain. Hmm? My rifle disappeared two days ago. Yeah, I see what you mean. With everything else, a disappearing murder weapon is a little tough to swallow. Nan what? Who is it? Red and Phil. Oh, come in. What has happened? Where is Lee? We took him down to the Queen. He's locked in the cabin. Locked in? Yep. Your boy is in such a bad spot that we don't know whether to feel sorry for him or kill him. What do you mean? He doesn't mean anything. Where does Lee live, Nanwa? Why, Phil? We want to go over there. On Selitar Drive, just this side of the bridge. The number is 742. His is apartment 20 at the top of the stairs. All right, we'll be back, Nanwa. Stay awake, will you? make the noise, but this door's in the way. Let me show it. Oh, wait, wait a minute. What? Let me look at that, Skipper. Hmm. Spring lock in there. Sure. Japanese made. It's a knife blade job. Yeah? Yeah, this'll do it. Oh, uh, uh, stand on a light a minute, will you? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, someday, Gallagher, I'm going to ask you about your past. <laughs> Pure as spindrift, Skipper. I learned this from having such bad luck losing keys. I'll bet. Well, what are we looking for? Evidence. Any and all kinds. Red. Huh? Look at here. What do you got, Skipper? Here. It was behind the clothes in this closet. A Winchester rifle, 38 special. Lee didn't make that murder weapon disappear for long Wait enough. a minute, Red. Huh. If Clayton took it, he might have brought it back, you know. Yeah, maybe he didn't take it. I'm thinking we got two men with Three. motives. Lee might Four. have dreamed up that story of his to frame Clayton, you know. Six. Yeah, that's right, Red. Seven. Mm-hmm. Check the windows, will you? Oh, yeah. See if there's another way to get in here besides that door. These windows open out onto space as far as I can see. Yeah. Now, the door's at scale. Ah, and this must be the rifle. There's one gone out of the magazine. Okay, Red, let's go back to the house where the shot was fired. I still want to talk to old Kuo Feng and see what we can pick up. We didn't pick up anything from Kuo Feng. He was dead from a knife wound. He was lying in the middle of a badly furnished library. His pockets were pulled inside out. The room itself had been searched, too. Yeah, uh... I don't like this much anymore, Skipper. It's getting late. I'm with you on both counts. Was this guy here when you came into the house before? I wish I could tell you, Red, but I can't. I just came in and went upstairs. I didn't look in here. So what do we do with Nan Hua's boy? Huh? We'll leave him where he is. So far, he's ahead in my book by one empty cartridge case. <laughs> that isn't much of a lead. Well, there might be more. Let's go and find out, huh? <laughs> All 
right, now listen, Anwar. I want you to get a story across to Ralph Clayton and your father. Is Clayton still here? Yes, Phil. What story? That you've gotten a message from Lee. He's been drinking. He's losing face by hiding, and he's gone back to his apartment and is going to give himself up to the police in the morning. He is not, Phil. The story, Anwar. In the morning, he's going to tell the police everything he knows about what's going on behind your father's back. Phil. But don't use the word smuggling. Then you know. You will not tell anyone. It would ruin my father. You know what that would mean. I don't know anything gorgeous. I'm just guessing. You tell that story and maybe nobody will have to tell anything else. Skipper, sometimes I get a little disappointed in you. Yeah, Red? Why? Because sometimes you aren't open and above board about things. If you think somebody's guilty, why don't we go get him and knock him around until he says yes? Uh, that always works if you're patient. Brutal methods, Red. Dull and uninteresting. I don't know. This way we're hanging everything on two very small items. First, that empty cartridge case. Uh-huh. Doesn't seem to me that anyone would eject that thing from a lever-action rifle unless he wanted to leave it. Why? To frame somebody else. Yeah, but did you ever figure that it might have taken two shots to drill that guy? Gallagher, you're insulting. Of course I did. I counted the slugs in that rifle. You were there. One fired. Oh, oh, yeah. Item two, a key to Lee's apartment used to swipe the rifle and to plant it in the closet again. If somebody has it, he'll use it again to put Lee out of the way. Uh, uh, Item three. That two is enough. I just thought of this. Mm -hmm. Old Cole Feng's body and library was searched. Why? He was killed because I said I was going to talk to him, and he was searched for some dough, paid him for the use of that room with the view of you Lang's forehead. So we wait in the apartment, underhanded like. What do I do? You hide in the closet. Hide? Now, wait a minute. Be on hand in case I need you. Mm. I'm going to be reeking of liquor, passed out on Lee's bed. Well, I won't say anything about you being more at home than I'll be. What will you be wearing? Brass knuckles, Red. But look, if Clayton's innocent, he won't even show up. You see? Yeah, underhanded. Underhanded nothing. The whole thing depends on him. If he doesn't want to come, he doesn't have to. We splashed enough liquor around Lee's apartment to make it smell like the scene of a three-day binge. Oh, such a waste. Then Red went into a handy closet, leaving the door just ajar. I climbed into Lee's bed, turning my back to the room to give a knife wielder a good target. It didn't occur to me that he might be a knife thrower until I heard the door ease open and click shut. Then I had to force myself to lie still until I heard his footsteps into the bedroom. I gave myself a count of five. Then I heard his breathing fade in as he bent over. Hey, that's close enough! Hey! I turned over, and as I rolled, I started my right wrist. Jim! Hey! Oh, listen. You can make a pigeon out of yourself if you want to, but do it where I can't watch it. All right, he, all right. Uh, he had you practically All right, you never know. mind. Do, well, what'd you hit him with, anyway? Never give an underhanded guy like him a chance, Red. I told you what I'd be wearing, brass knuckles. I'd never go to bed in Singapore without them. There wasn't much left to be told after the police got through with Ralph Clayton. His confession about the smuggling saved Coogee Kang's face, and his confession of both murders lightened Nanhua's burden of widowhood and put Lee Chen Si back on the eligible list. The last time we saw them, Nanhua and Lee were holding hands, and Kang's arms were resting across both their shoulders. An odd finish for the wedding. But it looked like they'd have better luck on the one obviously coming up. We moved out of the harbor and found the wind. Stand by to make it streaked in from down across the line, and our crewmen jumped to their stations to send up the sail at whistle for. Eager arms and strong backs glistened in the sun, and the mainsail went up smartly and bellied out. The jib shot up. Swung out over my head and fought with the sheets that held it in place. 
The Scarlet Queen shook under the push of wind, then dug her starboard rail into the green turmoil she caused, lifted her port side shamelessly to sun and air, and leaned into her course up into the South China Sea. Hey, we got a whopper. But she likes it, Skipper. She's flirting with it. I guess it'll treat her right, Red. As long as we can hold our feet to the deck angle. <laughs> well, I've grown lopsided learning to do it. Yeah, I noticed. You have to fight to navigate a level street. Oh, not every street, Skipper. <laughs> Say, it looked like spring was blooming or something in Singapore, didn't it? Oh, not in Singapore. There aren't any different seasons. They're all the same. Skipper. I'm talking about romance. Cupid. Oh, oh. Yeah, the name of the game. <laughs> Manhua and that Lee Chen Si. Well, you got to blame it on something. Yeah. And nice kids for land people. Yeah, great. I wonder where we'll be when they get secured. I don't know. The farther, the better. But promise me one thing, Skipper. Don't ever take me to another wedding. This is the second one I've been to, and I don't like them. Yeah? What happened at the first? I got married. Oh, Red, no. Yeah. I was on a card schooner then, fishing the Newfoundland banks. I made one trip after the wedding, and when I come back, she was gone. And do you know what she left me for? No. A uh, uh, desert prospector. Worse? He rented canoes in Central Park. And after this one, no more. <laughs> I see your point. Yeah. The little woman I got now is good enough for me. Just moving up into the China Sea and leaving you alone. <laughs> to the Queen, Skipper? To the Scarlet Queen. Girl enough for us, huh, Red? <laughs> after you, mate. After you. Log entry. The Catch Scarlet Queen. 5.30 p.m. Wind, fresh to moderate. Sky fair. Sea cresting with high cross swell. Mainsail and mizzen reefed. Ship secure for night. Signed, Philip Carney. Master. The Voyage of the Scarlet Queen has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. 